The universe is vast and complex. Luckily for us, the particles and their interactions are just right to allow for a stable universe. Well, at least stable enough for us to exist here and now. Some of these particles impact our lives greatly. Some are fundamental to our existence and others are merely part of the cosmic fabric underpinning the universe with no real impact on us. So this begs the question, what is the most important particle? In existence. To start with, how do you even define important? It's not trivial. You could define it as the particle which has the most interactions, the particle which has the greatest influence on other particles. It would be easy to crown the winner in this case. It would be the Higgs boson. But gosh, this is a boring definition. Rather, I would opt for the particle with the greatest impact on our lives. So what are the candidates? The standard model holds all of the particles that we are confident exist. It is constructed from fundamental mathematical symmetries, and many of the particles were predicted long before we were able to observe them. Any particles beyond the standard model can be ruled out, because even if they do exist, they have little impact on our lives. So no dark matter, antimatter, or any other exotic composite particles. The standard model consists of several groups that are defined due to the type of mathematical symmetry that leads to them. It's not really important what these symmetries are, at least not for this video. What is more important is the differences that these symmetries lead to. The standard model groups are leptons, quarks, gauge bosons, and scalar bosons. Leptons are small particles with two subgroups, one containing the electron and heavier versions of the electron, and the other containing ultralight and maybe even massless neutrinos. Quarks. Quarks are much heavier particles than leptons and have a few quirks that make them different. While leptons have integer charge, quarks have a factor of one third. You could argue that one third is the fundamental charge quantity and really should be called one, but conventions are hard to change. There is also a few other differences, but we'll get into those in a minute. Bosons. There are two types of particles, bosons and fermions, and they're different by their allowed quantum value of spin. Bosons only have integer spin, whereas fermions like quarks and leptons have half integer. It seems like a subtle difference, but it has significant and not obvious consequences, leading to bosons forming special exotic forms of matter. The boson you're most likely familiar with is the photon, which is responsible for the electromagnetic force. But on top of this, there is the W and Z boson, which are responsible for the weak force, gluons, which are responsible for the strong force, and the Higgs boson, which is responsible for mass. So let's go through each of these groups and rule out the particles that are not even close to being the most important. Let's begin with quarks. An important characteristic of quarks is they don't like freedom. Instead, they prefer to be bound together with other quarks to make what we call composite particles. As a consequence, quarks and gluons go hand in hand. Gluons are the particles that mediate the strong force, which is what binds quarks together and makes particles like protons and neutrons. Without a doubt, they are fundamental to our existence. But what is their impact on our lives? This is where we need to draw a line in the sand and say that fundamental properties don't count as impact. We don't exist without atoms, which are made from quarks in the form of protons and neutrons. But we don't take advantage of the property of quarks in our lives. They're constantly doing their job to keep the universe functioning, but we don't use them directly. Sure, they have a lot of indirect consequences, but not so many direct ones. Thus, I would say that quarks as a whole and gluons are not the most important particles. If you disagree, let me know what particle you think is the most important and why in the comments. The force mediating particles. In quantum field theory, all of the forces are transferred via particles and all of these particles are bosons. We have already ruled out gluons. The next on the chopping block are the weak force mediators, the W and Z boson. Unfortunately for the weak force, it's weak, very weak. In comparison, it is several orders of magnitude weaker than the electromagnetic force, which is in itself several orders of magnitude weaker than the strong force. As a consequence, the W and Z boson don't do much, so let's rule them out. We'll come back to the photon later. The last boson, 
the Higgs boson, is a vector rather than a scalar. This just means it was defined from a different mathematical symmetry. Now, the Higgs boson is responsible for giving mass to particles. It is not the same as the proposed graviton, which would mediate gravity. Fundamentally gives mass rather than having anything to do with the way the masses interact. In quantum field theory, we think of particles as perturbations of a larger field that spans all of space and effectively all of time. Around the Big Bang, things get a little messy, so let's just ignore this. So every massive particle locally interacts with the Higgs field to get mass. And the strength of this interaction is what gives the mass of the particle. Photons don't interact with the Higgs field, but heavier quarks interact strongly. The Higgs boson is a pretty important particle. It is fundamental to our existence, but does it affect our lives that much? I would argue no. We indirectly benefit from gravity that is produced by mass, and we of course need mass. But compared to some of the other particles, it's not quite so compelling. It's kind of just sitting in the background doing its job. Leptons. There's plenty of particles in the standard model that don't exist outside of extreme environments. These are all of the heavier particles. In the lepton group, the heavier particles are the muons and tauons. They are effectively heavy electrons, but this additional mass comes at a cost. They're not stable. Unlike the humble electron, which seems to be stable forever, muons and tauons decay into other particles. Free muons decay into an electron and electron neutrino, while tauons decay into several different types of particles. But both don't have a very long lifetime. So we can rule out muons and tauons because they're just too short lived to have a strong effect on our lives, but we will keep electrons in the running for now. Although I will give a shout out to muons for helping us to understand our atmosphere better through measuring their decay from space and for some pretty cool experiments where scientists have made the hydrogen atom, but with a muon rather than an electron. The other part of the lepton group is neutrinos. These are extremely light particles that have very little to no mass. We're yet to measure the mass of a neutrino, so we're still unsure how heavy they may be. The problem with neutrinos is they're constantly traveling around this or at the speed of light, and they only interact via the weak force. The weak force is, as its name suggests, a weak interaction. As such, neutrinos barely interact with anything, and but they are pretty much everywhere. About 100 trillion neutrinos are estimated to pass through your body every second without causing you any problems. Many of these neutrinos will have just passed through the entire Earth before reaching you. But as a consequence, neutrinos are just very difficult to detect. When we try to detect neutrinos, we build large deep underground rooms filled with oil and in just to increase the chance that neutrinos might interact in there. Because they are so hard to detect and don't interact with many things, we can safely rule neutrinos out. The remaining particles are the electron and the photon. I left these two for last for a reason. They both have significant impact on our lives. Photons may mediate the electromagnetic force, but more importantly, they illuminate the world around us. Photons bounce off objects in our environment and enter our eyes, allowing us to see what is around us. On top of this, they also carry heat to us from the sun, warming our planet and facilitating life as we know it, among many other things. Clearly, they have a significant impact on our lives. How could anything else compete? Enter the electron a small but robust particle that is up for the task of dethroning the proton. But how could such a small particle have such a large impact? Well, when you think about it, electrons are basically doing everything. Covalent bonds, which are atomic bonds that form from atoms sharing electrons, hold pretty much everything together. This means that our understanding of condensed matter is mostly just an understanding of what electrons are doing. In many models, the rest of the atom is just approximated as a static potential. Electricity is the flow of electrons, so we can thank electrons for modern technology. Sure, there are some systems where charge transport is not done by electrons, but these are not very common. Even light itself is emitted from electron transitions in atoms. Although to be fair, light also does come from other reactions like fission and fusion. In the end, mitochondria might be the powerhouse of the cell, but electrons are the powerhouse of the universe. So who wins, light or electrons? For me, as a quantum physicist, I have to go with the electron. It facilitates so many amazing things in our world. But what do you think? Is the photon better or maybe another particle? Did you know that we still need to figure out what is exactly inside of a proton? You'll have to watch this video to find out more about the rich particle soup that's inside of protons.